here and uh, we will get started. I just got inside about 20 minutes ago, but then I had to eat and uh, so I'm a little behind, but I'm almost there. Oh dear God, what did I do? <laughs> uh, let's see. All right. I think I'm, I think I'm good. I think so. All right. So uh, I do have a lot of announcements tonight. Uh, hopefully you guys will be interested in it. Um, and, uh, and I will try to go as quickly as possible. And then if you have any questions about what I talked about, uh, feel free to ask in the comments. We'll get to it. But this is our Sunday Night Live. Uh, we do this every Sunday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We go live right here on our YouTube channel, My Shire Farm. And uh, we do a live Q&A. So if you have any questions about Caternix quail, breeding, hatching, colors, whatever the case may be, feel free to ask and we will do our very best to help you on your adventure with Caternix quail. <clears throat> and uh, we do a couple fun things here every Sunday. So I do announcements at the beginning, which I'll get to in a second. Uh, we will have more announcements tonight than what we normally do. Um, but uh, it's all very exciting news, so hopefully you'll stay around with that. Um, and then we support each other here, so if you can, hit the like button and support the channel. I would greatly appreciate it. Um, also, if you've hatched any eggs from us this week and have not told us that the uh, hatch rate yet, feel free to let me know. I've got my trusty notebook here. We'll write that down and add that to the numbers. Um, for February, because we just are for March, I'm sorry, for March, we just ended. Uh, we actually finished with a, with a 74.8% hatch rate. So we are tearing it up in the hatch rates on chipped eggs this year. Uh, so I'm very, very excited about it. I really do believe that we could hit on average a 75% for the year, um, which would be phenomenal. So, uh, bring, keep bringing me, whether well, those are good, bad, ugly, in between, whatever, uh, we definitely want to know so that we can keep improving here. Uh, but if you've hatched any and not let us know, feel free to let us know that as well. Uh, and I do think I already mentioned it, but support each other. Uh, be nice in the comments and obviously support the channel by just hitting the like button. Okay, uh, so I've got a couple announcements here. Number one, uh, let's talk about something I haven't done uh, since last year, and that is the 18 and under contest. It is back. I'm very excited about it. Uh, we have new new rules and, and how we're going to do it. So what it is, it's, it's, it's a contest that we're going to do once a month, the first Sunday of every month, and it is to encourage and entice the next generation, 18 and under, to get involved with self-sufficiency, entrepreneurship, responsibility, uh, try to get them off their phone a little bit and outside and, and working for something. So uh, we really do have, um, we really feel like it's very important to us to do this. Um, we have partnered up with Wynola Ranch um, and Dale's Quails and Quail University. Uh, so, the winner of every month is going to get a cage from Wynola Ranch, a brooder from Dale's Quails, they will get hatching eggs uh, from myself with a candler and a pair of scissors, and then Quail University um, is going to be donating an incubator every month to the 18 and under contest. So it's, I mean, it's everything you need to get started. Uh, so it's very exciting about that. Um, and, uh, and we have our first winner of the year. So it is Angela. Um, I'm not going to say the last name, uh, but it's Angela. She's 12 years old. Uh, she wants to do this to help her family so they don't have to buy them from the store. Um, they work with their, her family works really hard, works long hours. Uh, she wants to contribute. Uh, she said she wants to raise them so that she can get the eggs so that grandma can cook them for them. Uh, so I thought that was cute. She said she'll let her, her little brother look at the chicks when they hatch out, so I thought that was nice. And uh, her favorite color is the Egyptians and the wild so far. Uh, but what I plan on sending her, I think she's going to have a new favorite color pretty soon. Uh, so that's really cool. So Angela, congratulations. I did email the email that you had, had sent the entry for uh, to make sure you check out the live. So when you see this, email me back with all your information. I'll send that over to uh, Wynola Ranch and Dale's Quails, and we will get that stuff out to you uh, this week or next. Uh, so congratulations to that. Um, 
Quail University, let's talk about that next. So Quail University is donating an incubator every month to the 18 and under contest. If you don't know what Quail University is, um, you do, you need to know, right? Uh, so Quail University is a online interactive class that my Shire Farm, Linda Easton Waller from Hatching at Home, um, Jasmine Bass from Time and Timber uh, have put together and it is about, it's almost eight hours long and you can do it however you want to do it, you know, a class a day or a chapter a month or whatever. Once you get the class, it's yours forever. It's called Quail 101 um, and there's going to be spreadsheets, handouts, all kinds of really great stuff and it is everything, I truly believe it is everything that you need um, to be successful with raising Caternix quail and to help you on your adventure with quail. I do believe that this is for everybody. I think there's a lot of information in here that will help you sell better, raise better. It's a lot of best practices, uh, gives you different points of views. So I really do think that it's for everybody. It's only $49 uh, and obviously you just type in quailuniversity.com, uh, check it out. But um, we have had 28 graduates so far, and we started two weeks ago today is when it went live. Uh, so I just wanted to do a quick shout out to the graduates so far. So Verna, Tanya, Jason, Georgia, Chris, Shannon, Steve, Lori, Alex, Christopher, uh, another George. Oh no, that was Georgia. Sorry, George. Sheridan, Susan, Bye, Kate, Becky, Edgar, Angie, Jeremy, Lisa, Mary, uh, Devon, Stephanie, Dale, Jackie, Tom, Connie, and William have all completed the course. They've given us feedback. They've received, uh, I don't know if I'm supposed to show this or not. Um, uh, it's got a name. It, it should be. So you get a little certificate. Uh, we actually just printed one out, uh, but it's really cool. And uh, so they've already completed the course 100%. So that's really, really cool. Uh, we are getting a lot more people than what we were expecting and all positive feedback. So make sure you check that out. Also, uh, about the 18 and under contest, if you know someone that is 18 and under uh, that would benefit from this, that would be helpful with this, um, <clears throat> or whatever the case may be, all you're going to need to do is email me at Zach at myshirefarm.com. Uh, the 18 or under contestant will want to just email me a little bit about themselves, name, um, age, why they want to, to raise Caternix quail, uh, and we pick a, a winner every month. Uh, we do get quite a bit of entries, um, so you know if you're not picked, you're going to be in the running for that next month. They don't get deleted, uh, so it just rolls over to that next month. Um, but uh, everybody that um, completed Quail University already. Congratulations. Um, that is really, really cool. I was not expecting people to finish that quickly. Uh, so that is awesome. Uh, so congratulations to all of you. Conga congratulations to An Angel. I think I might have said Angel earlier. I don't remember. Um, congratulations to Angel uh, for winning the 18 and under contest. And thank you very much to Jasmine and Linda that helped put Quail University together, and as well as Dale and Wynola Ranch uh, for contributing to the 18 and under contest. That is absolutely awesome, and I really appreciate it. Um, I got two more announcements. One's quick, one's a little long, I'm sorry. Uh, the next one is updates on the website. Uh, we have updated our website this week um, significantly. Uh, we also updated our website on ship times. Um, so if you order Jumbo Wilds, Jumbo Mix or Jumbo Egyptians. The wait time is a little bit longer than what it is, um, but I'm currently going through another 1,200 uh, grow outs and I'm weighing them all and it's just taking time. Uh, but I do believe that that wait time would be somewhere around two to four weeks. I did not change those yet because I have not went through all of the grow outs yet, but from what I've already done, it we're literally at a 98% wait ratio, you know, as far as there's 2% that didn't make weight out of all the ones I've done so far. Um, so those, those eggs are going to start rolling in and I'll be able to get a, a much smaller wait time on that. 
Uh, the jumbo whites are now like a one to three, one to four week time frame. They're actually at the one week. I'm just afraid that once people see that, a lot of people will order, so I gave myself a little bit more. So uh, we are getting caught up. At this time last year, we were a minimum of one to two months out. Uh, so I'm very excited about that. So make sure you check that out. And last but not least, let's talk about QuailCon, shall we? All right. QuailCon is an event we have here at Myshire Farm every year. This will be our third year doing it. It's going to be September 2nd and 3rd, um, which is really exciting. And uh, it's going to be on a Saturday, Sunday. It's a two-day event, and uh, tickets are on sale now on our website. Um, and in, in the description of all that, you'll see a lot of stuff, but I'm going to go over it real quick with you. Um, we're going to be adding more, uh, but we wanted to get the mainframe done first to start selling the tickets. Uh, and we're going to be adding stuff on. But we are jam-packed this year. We've changed a lot of things. Uh, we've improved a lot of things. And uh, we're going to be giving you so much more uh, reasons to come. So I'm very excited about that. So I'm just going to get into it. Saturday, the gates are going to open at 11 a.m. Um, and then, we're obviously, we're going to have vendors. I do not have vendors signed up yet because I didn't want to until we started selling tickets. Um, obviously, I already have a few. Um, that I've already talked to because they're involved with QuailCon. Uh, but we will be starting to take vendors. If you're interested in a vendor spot, uh, feel free to text me. Um, it might be a few days before I get back with you, but I'll give you all that information. So we are looking for vendors. Um, and then at 1140, we're going to do main uh, announcements in the, in the main tent. And then from noon to 6 p.m., your day is full of all kinds of fun, crazy stuff. So we've got barn tours, we've got farm tours, we've got uh, butcher workshops, we've got, day, uh, well, let me, let me back up. So I'll be doing far barn tours. So we're gonna walk you through all of the barn, show you all the stuff that we have in there. Papa the Builder is gonna be doing farm tours and showing you all the stuff that he's built throughout the years, which is a lot of fun, and showing you the, the farm in general. Jasmine Bass and um, a couple extra people are going to be doing the butcher workshop. They're going to walk you through how to butcher Katernix quail if you want to be a part of that. Dale from Dale's Quails is going to be doing a do-it-yourself workshop. Uh, so he's going to, what I'm, the plan is I'm going to be getting uh, a cheap rabbit cage from Craigslist here. And he's going to show you how to modify that extremely cheaply to just get started. He's also going to show you how to put his uh, cages and, and brooders together and things to think about when you're doing, uh, when, when you're building a cage yourself. Whiskey Tango Farms is going to be talking about Rabbit 101, Rabbit Tree, um, because uh, the whole goal of this is to become more self-sufficient. So I'm very excited about that as well. Melanie Ward and her husband are going to be doing a farm safety class. Uh, I think it's very, very important. Um, I think it's one of those things that we need to know and have in stock, and you just don't know what you don't know. Uh, so that's going to be awesome as well. <coughs> I'm sorry. This is all Saturday, everybody. We've got two days of this. And then we're also going to have Verna Young, which is a moderator on here under Vase Place. Uh, she's going to be talking about Quail 101, the basics of Caternix Quail. So if you haven't started or you just started, that um, master class is going to be great for you. We're also going to have Katrina on here, which is a, a YouTube person as well. Uh, she does a live every Monday. Uh, her YouTube channel is called Sew and Tear. She's going to talk about aviaries and how to raise them in aviaries and the differences between aviaries and, uh, and, and cages. Um, I don't talk a lot about aviaries on here because we haven't used our aviary for quail for 10 plus years. Um, so I think that'll be a great class for a lot of people. And then Linda Easton Waller, which uh, helped put together, and this was her brainchild, Quail University. She also put together a great um, class called uh, Hatching at Home. Um, and she is going to be speaking twice on Saturday about marketing. Um, and so I'm very excited about that as well. And then from six to seven, if you opt in to have the dinner, uh, the dinner is going to be Caternix quail, 
uh, that we're going to grill out here. We're going to be butchering and, and grilling out. Uh, the butchering will be done weeks in advance um, for the event. Um, and then we're going to grill that out. We're also going to have a pig roast, which is really cool. Uh, and we're going to treat you guys to a farm fresh... Um, I'm sorry. The dogs are barking. A farm fresh meal, which is really cool. The meals are going to be $15 each. Uh, that includes adults and kids. Uh, and then the tickets, anyone that's 18 and under is free uh, with the purchase of an adult ticket. And the adults are going to be $55 this year. Uh, and that includes both days. Uh, and then we also have some camping tickets uh, where you can camp out here. It, it's it's going to be as primal as possible. It's actually one of our cow fields that obviously we'll take the cows out uh, in advance. Uh, and that is, I believe, $40, but I did not write that down, so I do not remember. Um, so we are going above and beyond this year with a lot of extra stuff. Everything I mentioned was just Saturday, everybody, uh, and it's jam-packed, so that's a lot of fun. Uh, and then I've got a really big thing I'm working on, and if it pans out, oh my God, it's going to be awesome. But it's not panned out yet, so I'm going to leave that alone. Now, on Sunday, the gates are going to open at 8 a.m., uh, and then our first uh, speaker is going to be at 9 o'clock, and that's going to be Jim, our MPIP guy. He works the natural, National Poultry Improvement Plan. He's going to be talking about quail diseases. He's going to talk about avian influenza. He's going to talk about biosecurity, and that is going to be absolutely amazing. Um, and then Jasmine Bass, which is uh, my co-host for Quail University, uh, she's going to be talking about quail enrichment and how to make the quail happier and what they can have, and, and that's going to be amazing. Uh, then, unfortunately, you guys get me, uh, and I'm going to be speaking about quail for profit, uh, and then my plan is I haven't put this, the speech together yet. I haven't put the master class together yet, but the plan is that we're going to do a quail for profit uh, master class, and then we're going to do a rapid fire actual live Q&A where we're not on camera, it's we're live together. So I think that might be a lot of fun, uh, but I got to put my speech together and see if we have time for that. But I'll be speaking with that. Uh, Whiskey Tango Farms is going to be talking about quail genetics. Uh, Chris Carnes from Slightly Redneck is going to be back. He's going to be talking about co common problems you see in Caternix quail and troubleshooting them. Uh, George Aid, which is my help here at the farm, he's been with us uh, four years today, actually. Um, and he's going to be talking about a breeding program uh, and what you need to think about and what we what we recommend, what he rec recommends. And then, I haven't even mentioned this, we're going to be doing raffles. So Saturday and Sunday, you have a, uh, an option to buy, you know, dollar tickets for cages or brooders or incubators or eggs or whatever the case may be. Um, and, uh, and we're going to announce the raffles. We're going to do giveaways, um, which is going to be a lot of fun. Wynola Ranch and Dale's Quails has already offered to, to uh, give us some free stuff for some giveaways, which is awesome. So thank you very much. Uh, we're going to do closing remarks, and then we're going to uh, end up with live bird sales. Um, so I'm going to be doing uh, hatching egg sales on Saturday, uh, and then whatever lays on Saturday, I'll, I'll sell on Sunday. Uh, and then live bird sales will be from 4 to 6 on Sunday. Um, so I'm very excited about that. That was a lot of information. I get it. There's a lot in there. Uh, and we planned it that way. We wanted you to have your money's worth, have a great time, take away so much good information. It is um, on the website under uh, the QuailCon tickets. You can actually see all the information on there and the speakers and everything like that. We're also going to have... <clears throat> expert tables. Uh, so Brooke is going to be doing some uh, crafts for kids and show the kids how to put some stuff together. Ed, Ed Got Bait, which is my other moderator here on YouTube, is going to be, a do, be doing a craft table for adults, uh, which is going to be really cool as well. Uh, and then Keith, which is my main, uh, I well I guess I'm his supplier, he's the main wholesale person for feeders, uh, for reptiles or falconers and I don't know, a long distance. Like, he's he's the guy. Uh, he gets the quail from us, and, and he's the wholesaler. And uh, he's going to be here 
and uh, he's going to have an expert table. If you're interested in selling quail, uh, one of the biggest things that you have to, to figure out and get through is <clears throat> how do you get rid of all your males, right? It's easy. To, it's easier to sell the hens, uh, but how? what do you do with all the extra males? Uh, Keith would be an amazing person to talk to. He's been doing it for 25, 30 years. Uh, he knows what the reptile people want. He knows what the falconers want. He knows exactly the right pricing. I mean, he's he's the expert that you'd want to talk to as far as that goes. So he'll be here as well. Uh, we're working on some other things, so there's going to be more things in the mix. Uh, we've already sold over 25 or 30 tickets. Uh, we are only we are limiting our tickets to 300, so make sure you get those tickets now. And uh, again, if you have any questions about QuailCon, feel free to ask. Uh, in the comments and I will get to them um, and uh, I think that is all the announcements so I threw so much at you in the past 21 minutes so I apologize uh, but I had a lot to share I will be doing a video on QuailCon uh, later this week hopefully as soon as I find the time to breathe I'll, I'll get that done so there's more information to share um, but again if you go to our website and go to the I don't know, drop down that says QuailCon 2023. You'll see the QuailCon tickets. You click on that. There's a description of everything I just said. Uh, and then there's also camping tickets, description of that. And also the dinner, which is a description of that. Uh, so you can get that information there and I'll, I'll do a video for it later. So everybody I mentioned, I've already went on 22 minutes, so I'm not, I'm not going to do it anymore. But for everyone I mentioned that is uh, doing a master class, workshop, speaking, expert tables, uh, donating, whatever the case may be. Uh, everybody that, that's doing that, thank you from the bottom of my heart. I really do appreciate it. Um, we are, we're going to blow the, well, we, it's outside, so there's no doors. We're going to blow everyone's mind this year with QuailCon. Like, we are going bigger and better than ever. Um, I'm a little worried because I don't know how I'm going to top it next year. Uh, so that's where my brain already is like, well, what the crap do I got to do next year to, to top this? Uh, but I guess we'll just worry about that later. I, I don't know what else to say. Right. Uh, so everybody involved, thank you very, very much. I am very excited about it now that it's planned. And the big part for me is done for a while. Um, other than paying for so much stuff. Um, but other than that, uh, I feel a big weight lifted off of me. I was really dreading it, but once we started getting into it, man, I got super excited. I really do think you're going to enjoy it. Uh, we had, we maxed out tickets last year, actually sold an extra 28 more, uh, than what we were wanting to do. Uh, so tickets do go fast. Uh, so make sure you check that out and, uh, hopefully you can, uh, hopefully you can come and, and meet all these wonderful people, be around like-minded people, have a lot of fun, learn a lot of stuff and just enjoy a nice weekend. Uh, so hopefully you can do that. Again, Quail University to all the graduates so far, 28 of you, congratulations to that. Uh, that is super, super cool. Uh, to the 18 and under contest winner, Angel, congratulations to you as well. And um, I think that is it. And check out the website with the new uh, ship dates. I'm very excited that we are getting caught up. All right. So I think that is it. I'm going to take a drink because I've been talking nonstop for 23 minutes, and then we will get into the comments. All right. So, uh, also, there's going to be two bouncy houses for the kids. There's going to be games. There's cornhole tournaments. There's, like, we're going to have a lot of fun. I didn't even mention any of that. There's more to come. I'll just leave it there. Because uh, you guys want to get your questions answered. So, if you have any questions about the 1800 contest, if you have any questions about the Turning Quail, about QuailCon, about Quail University, if you have any questions about anything I can help with, feel free to comment. And that is what we're going to do now. Again, support the channel by just hitting the like button. It doesn't cost you anything. Makes me feel better. Gets the word out there about the Turning Quail. Helps the whole algorithm thing. I don't know how it works, but hit the like button, support the channel. All right, here we go. I am losing comments, so we obviously have a lot. So uh, the first one I see is Joy. Welcome from Western Oregon. Welcome. Glad you're here. Vay's Place is obviously in the house. Uh, she's my moderator on here as well as Ed Got Bait, so thank you very much for doing everything you do. S.O. Swanson is in the house. 
uh, says, hey there, cuz. Welcome. Glad you're here. S.O. Swanson is also an admin for me on the new QuailCon 2023 Facebook group. He's been helping out a lot behind the scenes lately. Uh, so make sure if you are interested in QuailCon and you want to come and you want to get updates, make sure you join that Facebook group as well. Uh, but it's going to be a lot of fun. Um, Lost Ear Acres Hatchery is in the house. Says, hey, everyone. Hey, Zach. How's everyone doing today? Busy, but a lot of information out there. Really good, really good. Uh, and welcome. David's in the house. Welcome. Buddy is in the house from New York. Welcome. Uh, John F. is in the house. Good evening to Vase Place. Good evening, everyone. Welcome. Glad you're here. Uh, let's see. La Sierra Acres Hatchery says, uh, checking in from Riverside, California. That's another thing we do on here. Um, every Sunday is if you want to let us know where you're from, it's always interesting to see where all the quail people are at in the world. Uh, John F. is in the house, says, I have a question, what's the deal with black quail? Uh, in my opinion, black quail are really just growl fees, but just different name, just like Jumbo Wilds and Jumbo Browns, same thing, just different name. Uh, Pappy's Homestead's in the house, I just finished my last uh, Quail University course yesterday, a lot of helpful info in there, well thank you very much, I'm glad you enjoyed it. Um... Happy's Homestead says, hello everyone from the mountains of West Virginia. Welcome. We're glad you're here. S.O. Swanson says, QuailCon, 153 days. There you go. <coughs> uh, Witch Doctor is in the house. Welcome. Glad you're here. Uh, let's see. Joy is in the house. Says, sold 30 dozen eggs today. Congratulations. That is a lot. That's really cool. Now to do Quail University. There you go. Well, good luck. I'm, I'm sure you're going to love it. Katrina's in the house from Gilroy, California. Welcome, glad you're here. Um, witch Doctor, which is Melanie, she'll be doing the safety class here. Um, farm safety class is going to do, uh, it says, can't wait to see everybody at QuailCon. Absolutely. Changing Winds Farm is in the house from Central Illinois. Welcome, we're glad you're here. Buster's in the house from Oklahoma. Welcome, we're glad you're here. Uh, That's true, too. La Sierra Acres Hatchery says the black quail are actually really, really dark Tibetans, but they call them black. That's true, too. It could be a dark Tibetan or a growl feet. There you go. Uh, Jesse Mills is in the house. Welcome. We're glad you're here. Jesse, you were the fourth person uh, that purchased tickets on the website yesterday for QuailCon. I did make them go live yesterday, but I didn't announce it until just now. Uh, so you were ready. B&G Farm in Virginia is in the house. Welcome. We're glad you're here. Psycho Ward 360, also a part of the safety classes in the house. Welcome. Laura's in the house from Montana. Welcome. We're glad you're here. Um, Pappy's Homestead says one dozen going into lockdown tomorrow and four dozen just put in the uh, bader today. Congratulations. You're well on your way. Mary Gold is in the house. Hi, all. Uh, Julianne is in the house. Welcome. We're glad to hear. Ducks Custom Garage is in the house. Hello, everyone from West Virginia. A lot of West Virginians tonight. Uh, Eric, welcome. Eric Willis is in the house. Welcome. We're glad to hear. Uh, Daniel Berrios is in the house from Copper State. Welcome. I'm going to butcher it again, but Arturus is in the house. If I didn't butcher it, great. If I did, I'm very sorry. You can feel free to correct me. Uh, PsychoWord360 says, hi, uh, hi all. Can't wait to see everyone at QuailCon. Absolutely. Rohan is in the house from St. Lucia. My first time early checking in. Well, welcome. We're glad you're here. Jason is in the house from upstate South Carolina. Welcome. Uh, again, Ed Got Bait is in the house. He's my moderator with Vase Place, so thank you very much. Carrie Carver's in the house. Hi, Zach. Do you give your quail chick, chicks grit? If so, what age do you give them? No. If they're in cages, they don't need, they don't need grit at all. Uh, let's see. Erica Willis says, hoping to get my eggs soon so I can have a uh, hatch to report. Well, good luck. And uh, obviously, keep me posted on that. Uh, Katrina says, yay, 18 under contest, helping the young ones get started. Absolutely. Uh, Nikki James is in the house. Uh, hi, all. QuailCon excited. Absolutely. Can't wait to get you and Brad here. Uh, Laura's in the house. I'm doing your Quail University 101. I have one question. I am on Chapter 6. I didn't see anything uh, as to when we start saving eggs when our new quail start laying. 
Uh, usually you want to wait about a week. Um, so the first five to seven days, you kind of just want to eat them yourself or whatever the case may be, uh, and then start incubating after that. Uh, it's a good question. Uh, I think we do talk about it, but I don't think we talk about it until chapter seven or eight. Uh, but I don't, I don't remember. There's so many, there's so many, so much information in that. Um, let's see. Sean is in the house. Uh, hi from Southern Dreams Farm in the Outer Banks of North Carolina. Welcome. We're glad you're here. Uh, Beekeeper847 says, LOL, I need a kid now. There you go. Janelle is in the house from Pickens, South Carolina. Welcome. We're glad you're here. Uh, let's see. A lot of people are congratulating the 1800 contest. Absolutely. Uh, Cronoli Silver is in the house. Can a four-year-old enter? Yep, absolutely. Anyone 18 and under. Sean is in the house. That's awesome. Congratulations. Yep, I, I think I did say Angel earlier. It's actually Angel, so I do apologize about that. Angel, if you're watching, you did win. I, I, I just said the name wrong. There were so many names to get out. I apologize. Doc Connie's in the house from Florida. Thanks for the help recently with uh, my baby's question. Not a problem, and good luck. Kimberly is in the house. Uh, hello from Georgia. Hey, Zach, while I read something about adding fish meal to grower starter to boost protein, is this recommended or not? You don't need... I'm not a big fan of adding stuff to feed. I'm, I'm a big fan of finding the right feed. Um, it's going to save you a lot of time, energy, effort, and probably money in the long run. Um, so if you're getting something between 25 and 30% protein, you don't need any more. Um, and that's kind of what you're looking at. But if you type into the YouTube search bar, um, feed by My Shire Farm, we actually have a video that goes all into that. Uh, MG is in the house. How can youngsters apply? We did talk about it. I think you had already asked that before I went to it, uh, but they'll email me, email me at Zach at MyShireFarm.com. Uh, my email is on the website as well, so you can look that up. David Lister is in the house from McAllister Quail Trail. Welcome. We're glad you're here. Kimberly is in the house. Good evening from the Thumb of Michigan. Welcome. We're glad you're here. Uh, Laura's in the house. Let me rephrase that. When can we start saving eggs from our young quail that are just starting to lay eggs? Yeah. About seven days. Uh, Jason says, I think it's awesome the 1800 contest won and gets to raise them. Yeah, I mean, it, it really does. We get a lot of great feedback from parents and kids that are really interested in uh, self-sufficiency and, and raising Caternix quail, and they start doing it. And, uh, you know, they really, uh, it really helps. It really helps. And it really becomes a whole family thing, which is nice as well. Uh, S.O. Swanson says, Quail University class reunion in September. Yep, absolutely, right here at My Shire Farm. Tammy's in the house. Welcome, we're glad you're here. Andrea Perry's in the house. Hi, had a great My Shire hatch here in North Carolina. 91 from 125 ordered. That is wonderful to hear. I took all my notes. Oh, here it is. I moved all my notes over and then I lost it. Uh, 91 of 125, 14 golds and the rest is Cosmos and Pansy Fees. With maybe a couple golds. That is wonderful to hear. Uh, those Cosmos are awesome. Pansy fees are too. Uh, let's see. Uh, I just got some quail and it's been impossible to get my four-year-old to leave them alone for even a minute. I keep the chicks in my bedroom closet and I woke up this morning with him in the closet. There you go. Uh, yeah, have them enter the 1800 contest. Time and Tender, Timber Homestead is in the house. That's Jasmine, which is our co-host on uh, Quail University, so welcome. Dale's Quail is in the house. Good evening, everyone. QuailCon is a go, absolutely. So Dale will be here. He's going to be a vendor. He's also going to be um, hosting a workshop. And uh, obviously, he already he also promotes um, the 1800 contest with a, with a free brooder. So thank you, everything you do for the community. I appreciate it. Uh, Time and Timber Homestead says, hello, fellow quail fanatics. Hope everyone is well. Absolutely. <clears throat> uh, Dreams Acres is in the house. My four-year-old is obsessed with our quail. Also, we just hatched out a batch in the incubator and about to go into lockdown for another hatchling. That is awesome. Congratulations and good luck on your hatch. Feather Connections Homestead is in the house. Hi, all. I'm listening in and got my quail con tickets. Who else is going? There you go. Uh, that's awesome. And uh, can't wait to see it. Feather Connections Homestead, as, as well as um, So and Tear, are going to be our MCs. They're going to be co-MCing the event, so that's going to be a lot of fun as well. 
Uh, the Grazing Farmstead is in the house. Happy Sunday, everyone. Sue B. from Southwest Missouri. Beautiful day here. Well, welcome. We're glad to hear. Sue is going to be a big part of QuailCon as well, uh, helping out with the butcher experience and, uh, and uh, all kinds of different stuff. She signed up for a lot. S. McKee is in the house. Just got home. What's happening, everyone? Welcome. We're glad you're here. Uh, if anybody did miss the first 20 minutes, I know it's a lot, but if you can go and watch that back at the end, or if I'm boring you now, watch it now. There's a lot of information I gave everybody, and believe you me, you will not want to miss the first 21 minutes of this live, because uh, I gave out a ton of information. Uh, Tony's in the house from Toronto. Welcome. We're glad you're here. Uh, my throat is very sore. And I also, pretty sure I broke my middle finger this week. So, um, bear with me. Sometimes I scream in agony and forget what I'm doing. Uh, and then uh, my throat's sore, so I keep taking cough drops. Uh, Time and Timber Homestead is in the house. Says, and hey, oh, QuailCon 23 is going to be amazing. Can't wait. Absolutely. Uh, it's going to be awesome. Frank Crow is in the house. Says, howdy, everyone. Welcome. We're glad you're here. Uh, let's see. We're just going to say Kayaker 81's in the house from California. Welcome. We're glad you're here. Buddy Anderson's in the house. I'm still waiting for my building to get done. Then I can start my setup. I have a few months before I can get quail. Fingers crossed. That's awesome. Uh, good luck. And if you have any questions, feel free to, to ask. And make sure you check out Quail, Con or quail University and, and come to QuailCon. Let's just do it all. Let's just do it all. Uh, let's see. Gutros Urban Homestead is in the house. Welcome. Also going to be part of the Butcher Workshop. Uh, so thank you very much for that. Tammy's in the house. Just moved our two and a half week old birds into the same coop as our six week old ones. And it went well using your advice. That's great. Scares me a little bit, but that's good. That's good. Uh, good luck with that. Uh, glad that the, the best practices worked uh, and helped. Beekeeper847 says I should get my nephew to sign up for the 18 under. Uh, he really liked the hatching part. There you go. That's exactly what it's for. Uh, let's see. S. McKee says 30, only, 30, only 49 thumbs up. Uh, we're up to 72. So if we can get, let, let's, our goal tonight will be 120. If we can get to 120 likes, I would say that would be a success. So support the channel. Hit the button. I'd appreciate it. Uh, Cronoli says, can I get a link to sign my sign for the 1800 uh, contest? He'd love this. Uh, you're just going to email, or well, the person that your son would want to email us uh, in his own words and tell us why he wants to raise quail and age and name and things like that. Uh, and then my email is uh, on the website as well. But it's zach at myshirefarm.com. Um, Mary's in the house from the mountains of eastern Arizona. Welcome. We're glad you're here. Katrina says, I'm so excited to share aviary stuff with everyone. She'll be uh, doing a master class at QuailCon uh, about aviaries and, and the differences between that and cages. So, yes, that's going to be very awesome. Nana's a nerd is in the house. Welcome, everybody. Uh, glad you're here. Um, JJ Willow is in the house. Welcome. We're glad you're here. God damn. Aaron's in the house from Indiana. Welcome. We're glad you're here. Fran says, yep, $40 and we will be camping. That's what I thought it was. Um, so $40 for that. We are going to have to change some things up this year. We had some bigger expenses this year. Um, unfortunately, we're going to have to make a driveway. Um, last year it rained like cats and dogs. And um, so we need to be prepared for that this year. We had, you know, cars getting stuck and, and ruin, the, ruin the ground and, and this, that, and the other. So we're going to be... Uh, I actually talked to where we get our tents, tables, and chairs at, and they gave us a great recommendation, so we'll be going with that. But that was an extra expense and uh, all kinds of stuff. The bigger we are, the more expensive it is, I guess. I don't you know what I mean? But uh, I feel like $55 uh, for an adult is really good, especially for a two-day event. Uh, you know, it's under $30 a day, um, and... Uh, and you, you, obviously, it's, it's jam-packed day, so. Uh, so, yeah. And then the camping's 40, and, and the, the dinner's 15, but that's, you know, everything's farm fresh, everything's here, we're doing it all for you, 
and uh, so hopefully you'll enjoy it all. Uh, JJ Willow says 55 per adult or per family. It's 55 per adult. The kids are free with a adult purchase. Uh, S.O. Swanson says $40 for camping includes three nights. Uh, is that correct? Friday, Saturday, and Sunday? Yes. You'll be able to, if you're camping here, you'll be able to show up Friday night after five or six. And then obviously, uh, you can leave, you know, Monday morning after the event or, or whenever you want to. But yeah, that'll be a three day or a three night camping thing. Loretta is in the house from North Carolina. Welcome. We're glad you're here. Uh, Katrina says happy quail equals happy people. Absolutely. Uh, John F. says, happy wife equals happy husband. There you go. S.O. Swanson says, camping is per family, dinner is per person, the event is, itself is per adult. Yes, that's a great way to say it. Um, we really want to encourage the kids to, to come and be involved. And uh, if you've got a big family, it's, you know, I, I've got five kids. I know that if you want to go anywhere, you're paying for yourself, your, your spouse, and then, you know, five kids, it gets... Very expensive, very quickly. So uh, kids 18 and under are free. Uh, we did consider maybe charging for the kids a little bit and knocking down the adult price. Um, but we've got a very big soft spot in our hearts to getting the next generation involved with self-sufficiency. Um, and so I just wasn't willing to do that this year. Uh, but we'll see. Uh, S. McKee says, one of my quail hens lays eggs with Extra calcium deposits all over it. The rest don't. What causes this? Just extra calcium. They're just eating and producing more calcium than the others. Uh, not a big deal and really doesn't affect the hatch rate. Uh, Katrina says, yay for crafts. Absolutely. Ed got bait and Brooke. Muse will be doing crafts for kids and adults respectively. And uh, that should be a lot of fun as well. Uh, and Katrina, happy birthday. I did not reach out to you. It was crazy, and I had some health issues yesterday, but happy birthday, and uh, I hope you had a great time. Andrea said, my Cosmos and Pansy Fee Chicks, the darker ones I'm guessing, are the Pansy Fees. Those are really difficult to differentiate between the two, like very difficult at Chicks. Um, so almost identical, but usually the Pansy Fees are darker. Uh, Daniel's in the house. All that's needed is a quail nutritionist and you're all set. Uh, this quail con sounds jam-packed. Well, we are talking about enrichment as well. Um, so there you go. Uh, Ed Got Bates says, I'll be showing you all my crafting secrets so you can make your own quail egg necklaces and earrings and some other stuff. There you go. Uh, Katrina says, it's going to be awesome. Last year was great. Quail con, absolutely. Cali Quail Keepers is announced, which is Brooke, which will be uh, doing the crafts for the kids. I thor thoroughly enjoyed speaking with Keith last year. Great guy, absolutely. Uh, let's see. Uh, Cali Quail Keepers is in Northern California. Welcome. Jesse Mills says, better bring the elephant next year. We're going to have to do something. I don't know. Uh, quail wrangling. Yeah, that's not this year. Uh, Williams announced from Southeast Michigan. Welcome. Foulmouth Girls Farm. Love that name. Says, question, are there going to be a business class in Quail University? Um, yes, eventually. Uh, it'll be part of the next class, uh, that we're planning on, which will be a class about quail for profit. Um, but yeah, we will go into that, uh, in depth. Uh, but we didn't want to do that with part of Quail 101, because uh, there's already so much information, but we will be doing that going forward. Uh, Tina is in the house. Welcome. Glad you're here. Buddy Anderson says, quail race. Uh, that could either take all day or real quick. I don't know which one it would be. Time and Timber Homestead says, it's going to be amazing. And the people that come really make the event. This community is top notch and like one big old family. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, and every year, just people are just gracious and kind and generous and they just come with they come with um an excitement that's contagious so when we all get together where whether it's you know really bad weather or we're behind schedule or or things are going perfect or anything in between like everybody just comes together and it's just like we all are one 
we're all one big team, one big purpose, and uh, it's, it's a great feeling. I mean, that alone is worth coming alone. Uh, Vase Play says 99 watching, only 63 likes. Hit that thumbs up, everyone. We are up to 96, so we're almost there. Uh, our goal tonight is 120 likes, so hit the like button, support the channel. Support the channel. I was reading the next comment, I apologize. Diana Tuttle from Top Farms is in the house. Welcome, glad you're here. David's in the house, says, Zach, do you prefer nipple or drinking cup for quail? I hate nipple, nipplers, nipples. I don't know what you call them. Uh, I don't like them at all. Um, but I don't even like them for my chickens. Um, I don't know. I just don't like them. I've never had success with them. They've always leaked or frozen or I, I don't know. There's there's people out there that swear by them and uh, to each its own. There's many different ways, uh, but I don't even like the drinking cups. I use all troughs. Uh, the troughs literally just snap onto the back of your cages. You can get those at winolaranch.com. And uh, we've moved everything uh, in our barns and troughs, except for our brooders, which are on the cups, uh, which we still love. It's just the troughs are superior. <laughs> uh, Johnny's in the house. How do we enter the 1800 contest? Uh, go to the website, look at my email, and then uh, the, the 18 or under contestant uh, will just want to uh, send me an email about their, their information. Um, you know, name age, why they want to raise quail, so on and so forth. Uh, Aaron says, S.O. Swanson posted some great hotel information in the QuailCon 2023 group today. Yeah, uh, he broke down every hotel that was close and near, uh, prices, things like that. Uh, so that was very helpful. And we're going to do that a lot on the Facebook group. So uh, make sure you check that out, QuailCon 2023. Um... I lost my spot. Uh, Cronoli says, so I just got 15 quail. My son is asking if we can hatch babies. So what incubator would you recommend for small scale meat production? Uh, I've actually done, I don't like recommending incubators. I think it's each their own. Uh, but if you go to our playlists on our, our YouTube main page, you'll see a playlist called quail product and, uh, reviews. And on there I've done uh, reviews on some incubators that are the most popular to purchase. Uh, the, you know, Hovabator, the Little Giant, um, the Nurturite 360, and you can watch those videos and just see what would work best for you. Uh, Zarifra is in the house from uh, Phoenix, Arizona. Welcome. I hope I said that correctly. If I didn't, uh, please correct me on, on the pronouncing of the name, uh, but welcome. We're glad you're here. Don Skin is in the house from South Mississippi. First time incubating our own eggs, hatched 20 of 30. That's awesome, congratulations. Uh, you did fantastic on all levels. The hatching, the fertilizing, uh, you did great, congratulations. Michael Rook is in the house from upstate New York. So excited my BTA eggs are shipping tomorrow, absolutely. I just made the foamer for all of those uh, and you'll be going out, uh, I think you actually do go out tomorrow. Uh, there's some that we're printing tomorrow that actually go out Tuesday, but I've got an point. I've got three appointments tomorrow starting at one, so I have to be off this farm to my first appointment by one o'clock. Uh, so I just did two days worth of of shipment, sent her the ship list, and said they go out within the next two days. Um, so, but I'm pretty sure you you were the first BTA I got to. Uh, let's see, Monica's in the house. It's uh, First time hatching Katrina's quail, my goby shows a max of 100.6, minimum of 98.8 with an average of 99.6 in a day. Should I be worried? Uh, you really don't like, I mean, it's it's okay. It's not great. It's, I wouldn't even say it's good. It, it's okay. But I think an easy way to fix that is just wrap your incubator with a blanket or a towel. That'll help stabilize it and uh, and it won't be fluctuating so much. Because uh, you really don't want the fluctuation. You know, 98.8 is not great. 100.6 is not awesome. But it would be better to stay with one of those than it fluctuate back and forth. Um, but uh, ideally, you want to be uh, at 99.5. Between 99 and 100 is, is what you want to do. Uh, but if you can make it exactly 99.5, that'd be great. Mary's in the house from Arizona. A lot of Arizonians tonight, I don't think. 
That might not be what you're called, but we're going to go with it for right now. Uh, Aaron Dutt's in the house. If you're trying to get certain traits, does it matter if it comes from the hen or roux? Um, it's always better to work with a roux um, because if you think about it, you can put five hens with one roux and you're going to pass on those genes every time. If you're working with a hen, then you're only getting one egg a day rather than a roux with five hens. You'll get five hens a day with, the, with that, with that trait or gene or whatever. Um, so it's a lot easier, faster, um, to work with the rue that you want to work with and go forward from there. Christopher's in the house from New York. A lot of New Yorkers here tonight. Welcome. I'm glad you're here. Uh, I'm going to, I'm going to butcher it. I'm going to try it. Uh, Gangde Vang Kid. I hope I said that correctly. I might not have. Uh, it says, hi, Michael from Minnesota. I placed an order from you for 50 eggs was sent 60. My incubator only fit 50. Can I still incubate the other 10 eggs after my first hatch? Expect, expected to hatch this weekend. Uh, I mean, I've had two people do it before and they've had like a 40% hatch rate. Um, so you can try it, but uh, you can also eat them too. I mean, they're still less than two weeks old because they're laid same day as ship. So uh, you can eat them. You can try to incubate them, but you're going to get a much uh, smaller hatch rate. Um, I guess you could go either way. Ideally, you all, you want to incubate within the first seven to ten days of them being laid. Uh, but, I mean, if you've kept them for this long, you can try. But you can still eat them. Uh, Patricia's in the house so says, hello from Virginia. Got 32 quail eggs from Whiskey Tango Farm and Incubator on, on day eight. Looking good. Can't wait. Thanks for all the information today. Awesome. And good luck on your hatch. Uh, Johnny says, Zach, what is a good start for quail? Um, it really depends on what you're looking for. Uh, feather sex bull mix, uh, variety choice, any of the jumbos. I mean, you really can't go wrong. But if you have a little bit of time, you go on the website, you can click on the ones that entice you. And in the description, that description gives you average egg size, uh, how long they live, how productive they are, how many eggs they lay in a year, how to sex them, um, you know, so, I mean, you can get a lot of information and, and kind of look through those bullet points and say, well, this is important to me and this is not really important to me and this is important to me. And then you can kind of determine from there. Uh, but something that's feather sexable is usually a good way to start. Uh, Tammy says, moved my two and a half week old birds in with my six week old birds uh, using your advice with the previous video. Uh, third set of eggs in the incubator. They are due to hatch on the 15th. We're in Daytona Beach. Well, congratulations on that. Glad that it helped, and I'm glad you're doing great. Uh, Foulmouth Girls Farm says, what makes a sex link? Um, I'm going to explain it very quickly, but the best thing to do is actually uh, look up that video on our YouTube channel. There's a playlist called All About the Colors. There's one about sex link quail uh, that you can watch. But long story short, uh, the best and easiest way to do it uh, and there, there's multiple ways, but the best and easiest way is you need the roux male over the same hen. So, for example, the roux is really just a redhead, right? The roux gene is really just the redhead of the quail family. That's all it is. So when we say roux, or yeah, when we say roux gene, R-O-U-X, we mean redhead, right? So if you take a traditional wild quail, pharaoh, a brown quail, like the traditional one, right? And you add that roux gene, that red gene to it, that makes an Egyptian quail. So it's really a red head wild, right? Well, if you take that red head male and put it over regular brown hens, then it sex links every time. Um, that is a very condensed, short, fast version of it. But if you watch the sex link video, it, it breaks it down much, much easier and faster, or much, much easier and slower for you to be able to keep up. Uh, Colleen Witt's in the house. Hi, I'm passing a couple weeks ago. Uh, you briefly said that you don't like uh, dividers and cages. My husband bought me uh, two Wynola Ranch cages without dividers. I was thinking I need to order one with dividers. You can. I mean, people use dividers. I don't I don't prefer it. I like them uh, to all be together. Um, it really depends on your purposes, but uh, it, it can go either way. 
they don't really care too much. I think you can fit more in there without the dividers. Uh, they look like they have more room than with the dividers, but I mean, it, that's just a personal preference. It's not a best practice or anything. So it really just depends on however you want to do it. Uh, Frank Crow's in the house. Anyone know where I can purchase egg cartons for less than 20 cents a carton? I'm selling 200 dozen uh, to a grocery store each month and would like to see if I can get my costs down. Um, you can contact me. Um, I mean, if you want to buy in bulk, I, I can get you some information. Sorry. Uh, Aaron says, get your likes in everyone. So I have to see so many quailers in here tonight. Absolutely. We got 117 watching, 109 likes. I appreciate everybody with all their support. Uh, the goal tonight is to hit 120 likes. So uh, support the channel. Hit the like button. I greatly appreciate it. Uh, can you expand on the divider topic? Yeah. So there's, long story short, there's best practices, right? Uh, so like a best practice would be, um, a best practice would be to wrap your incubator if you've got a tabletop incubator to wrap your incubator through the whole process to help stabilize and help your incubator maintain the same temperature throughout rather than it fluctuating. That's a best practice. The dividers, uh, I just personally don't like, um, but it's not a best practice. Um, so it's really just a personal opinion. So, I mean, if you want to get a couple of dividers, they're not very expensive, especially on one old ranch. You know, you put uh, one in with the divider and then you've got another cage, none, and then you can kind of see what one, which one works best for you. Uh, but it's not a best practice or anything. It's just my personal opinion. Uh, Sage Wolf 1975 is in the house from Northeast Ohio. Welcome. We're glad you're here. Colleen from Northeast Ohio is in the house as well. Welcome, both of you. Uh, Dr. Connie is in the house. Quail U was fantastic. Uh, so we'll put together and organized and such so well put together and organized and such valuable and pertinent information. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate that. Loretta says, question, my incubator pooped out on the third day of incubating, got a new one the next day, but 12 hours of non-incubating. Where do the odds all hatch? Any got them from my Shire Farm. Um... You are really cutting it close. Um, most like it will affect the hatch. It will affect the hatch. Most likely, you can still probably get. You could still probably get a fifty percent to sixty percent hatch rate. Um, so you still have good odds of getting a good hatch rate. They are for sure one hundred percent going to hatch late. Uh, so the incubator that you've got, make sure you wrap it with a towel, towel help that incubator, uh, make sure that your temp is, is on spot uh, through the whole rest of the process. At lockdown, you really need your humidity to be at 75%, like you really, really need that. Um, and then on day 20, you're going to want to increase your temperature a half a degree. So bump it up to 100% on day 20 and actually let them go until about day 22 because um, they are for sure going to hatch late. Um, it's a really good question. Keep me posted on it. Um, and we still guarantee a 50% hatch rate even if it's because the incubator goes kaput or whatever. Um, you know, that's not your fault. I know it's not mine, but you know, we'll, we'll meet in the middle and we still guarantee the 50% hatch rate. Um, I lost my spot again. Oh, here we go. S.O. Swanson says, let's show some love with a thumbs up. Absolute. We hit the goal. 122 likes. Thank you very much, everybody. I appreciate it. Uh, Kayaker81, thumbs up. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Mm. Wow. Uh, let's see. Straight, straight Bray is in the house. Uh, I had my Caterney Squail laying all year and recently they stopped laying for like a month. I was wondering, are they going to lay again or do I call them? Uh, most likely it's a molt, especially if they're about a year old. Um, uh, make sure it's 16 to 18 hours of light a day. Make sure that they're on layer crumble. It sounds like you're doing all that stuff because they were laying all year. 
Um, so most likely it's a malt, uh, which usually takes two to four weeks to start laying again. So I wouldn't worry about it uh, just yet if they still haven't laid in about an extra week, because uh, I think you said it's been about a month, um, then you could probably give them some uh, probiotics in the water and some rooster booster in the food, but I, I wouldn't I wouldn't do that yet. I, I'd let them do it on their own. Uh, let them do it naturally first. And if you need to help them by next week, then, then you can do that. Uh, Mary's in the house. Welcome. Michael Rook says, Zach, did you check out Crime Junkie? I did. I was having some issues with it. Uh, I was able to, to listen to um, a few, I guess you call them episodes. Um, and then for some reason, I, I don't know. I, I'm not... I don't know what it was, but it just would not play anything. It says that my phone was an adapt. I don't know what happened. Uh, so I have to work on my phone, but I just put my phone down and walked away. <laughs> Eric is in the house from New Jersey for the feather sex bull mix. Are they all good to live together as adults or is it best to separate per type? Uh, no, they can all live together as adults. And that's a nice little fun fact that maybe not a lot of people know is... You know, let's say you put, um, okay, so let's say you put scarlets, which is a red, solid red quail, and you put wilds together, right? Well, they actually produce Egyptians, right? Um, and then if you put, I don't know, if you put, um, if you put Italians with, the scarlets, they'll produce autumn amber. So like if you put certain colors together, they'll give you certain different colors, right? And that's the same for everything. However, with the feather sexable, if you breed feather sexable to feather sexable, no matter if it's an Italian and a pearl or a fab fee and a wild or a pansy fee and a autumn amber, I don't know, I'm, I'm running out of colors right now. Um, no matter what, it's always going to be feather sexable. Uh, so that's kind of a fun little fact. Oh, that hurt. That hurt. Diana Tuttle Tut Farms in the house has just got my QuailCon 23 tickets. Awesome. Can't wait to see you here. Um, <clears throat> Dr. Connie says, uh, kudos to you and Jasmine and Linda. And I'm sure Jenna did her share behind the scenes. Yep, she did quite a bit. And uh, that is how she likes it. She she likes to do behind the scene work. <laughs> and God Bates says, how did you break your finger? Hmm. I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> Something stupid. Uh, it's usually how it works. Uh, will there be a halftime show at QuailCon? Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm actually working on something, but um, it hasn't came to fruition yet. But there might be a show. There might be. Uh, Colleen says, love Quail University worth every penny. Highly recommend giving me co the confidence to raise Quail. That is wonderful to hear. I'm glad that it helped. And uh, congratulations. I'm glad you like it. Uh, Vase Place says, 111 watching, only 81 thumbs up. We got 122 watching and 127 thumbs up. You guys are absolutely awesome, so thank you very much. Little Ridge Farm is in the house. Says, howdy, howdy, howdy. Welcome. We're glad you're here. Uh, Maria is in the house from Utah. Welcome. We're glad you're here. Uh, Scrap WTF is in the house. I just decided a couple of days ago to raise some quail for meat. That is awesome. Well, good luck. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask. <clears throat> um, uh, <laughs> Aaron says, I would pay extra to see Zach Quail Wrangler. Quail Wrangle. Um, I don't know. I'm pretty fast and pretty good at it. Like, I'm, I don't want to brag or anything, but I'm kind of an expert. At, at getting these quail. Um, I have a lot of experience. <laughs> uh, Joker Brusa is in the house from Connecticut. Welcome. We're glad you're here. Uh, Pappy said, maybe a greased pig contest. Done that before. It's not as fun as you think. It's hilarious to watch. Not as fun to participate. I can tell you that. Uh, Katrina says, my, John F. Myshire Farms talk on quail for profit is a halftime gym. There you go. Uh, Katrina says, will there be friendly, free-range piggies again? There will be. Um, yep, nothing new, but nothing gone either. I'm trying to convince her to maybe downsize a little, little bit, but 
that's not going too smooth. Uh, Callie Quail Keeper says, Katrina will have so much to contribute with her knowledge on aviary settings. This is great. Absolutely. Uh, do you think the noise from 3,000 quail in a garage would disturb or be heard by neighbors? It's very loud from a distance. Uh, yes. Yeah. Oh, 300. No. No. I thought you said 3,000. I'm like, yeah, when they get there, then it's like the male, all the males do all day long is just crow at each other. Like they talk. They do not shut up. Uh, 300, not a big deal. Uh, Foster Farm is in the house from Tennessee. Welcome, we're glad to hear. Mary's in the house. About 200 eggs I got from you are on lockdown. Should start hatching tomorrow. Awesome, good luck, and uh, I wish you all the best. Obviously, keep me posted. Sean's in the house. What type of camping are you allowing? Just tents or campers also? Uh, tents, campers, we have some people that do the, the, the car thing. Um... Uh, we had one person two years ago, uh, that really just put a hammock up in between two, um, two trees and, and slept there. I mean, so, however, I, I, doesn't matter to me. However you want to sleep, you sleep. Um, and the camping ticket again is just, it's for three nights. Uh, so you purchase once and that's for Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Uh, Sean says, what type of camping are you allowing? Oh, I just read that one. Johnny says, is it okay to keep your sales in a notebook? Yes. That's what I prefer, actually. Uh, I have moved to QuickBooks and things like that, but I still have everything written down, too. I don't trust computers. Um, Callie Quillkeeper says, I hope to have some things to keep the kiddos occupied and go home with a QuailCon souvenir. There you go. Um. No one's talking to me. Ah. Christopher uh, McGorty is in the house. Welcome, glad you're here. I think he had a typo, so we used correcting it. Andre says, do you still find two water cups in a brooder to be enough? I forget your brooders hold 75. Uh, yeah, two cups is plenty. Uh, Bill Thompson's in the house. Good evening. Thanks for taking care of my egg order. Uh, brooder is done except getting casters from Amazon. That is great to hear. Good luck on that. I wish you all the best. Um, Richie Keenland is in the house. Richie at Stillwaters Farm in Central Florida. Welcome. We're glad you're here. Johnny Hans is in the house. Can't wait to get my eggs from you. Thank you very much, and we will get them out as soon as I possibly can. Uh, David says, how did you hurt your finger? Um, I was playing with one of my kids, and I hit it something fierce. <laughs> something stupid. Uh, False Farm says, MPIP inspector is coming the 13th. Any advice? I'm so nervous. You got it. Just clean. Be prepared, but it's it's nothing. It's nothing. They're there to help you. They are there to, to guide you. They're there to, um, you know, they're not there to, they really are there for you. So um, they're the ones that need to be nervous because they need to be prepared to answer any questions that you've got. Uh, you're just trying to soak in that knowledge. So just flip that around and say, hey, they're here. They're here to help us. They're help here to to uh, improve what we're already doing. So no reason to worry. Marie's in the house says 45 uh, went into lockdown, 41 hatched on on 328. It was so fun, my kids love it. We lost three uh, that die on us. The rest look so healthy, they eat like crazy. That is wonderful to hear, congratulations. Uh, and so you did great on the hatch, congratulations. Chase is in the house. Welcome. We're glad you're here. Um, S.O. Swanson says, if we can just get one more like, we're up to 132. So I do appreciate everybody for helping. Uh, thank you very much. 
False Farm says, I got my sister in Florida to buy Wynola cages. She loves them. Absolutely. I, I love Wynola Ranch cages as well. <laughs> Jay says, hey, Zach, what type of feather sex will mix would have a more gray color? I have one bird almost looks like silver. Most likely uh, Fab Fee is what I would assume. Uh, Jerry says, my first set of eggs I got from you laid their first eggs today. That's awesome. Congratulations. Uh, you are well on your way. And uh, how exciting. That's super cool. Congratulations. Uh, Ontario Canada Beekeeper blog is in the house. Just started, uh, just starting build incubator, bought some eggs, no cages yet. That is awesome. Good luck on your adventure with Caternix Quail. And uh, I wish you all the best. Wendy's in the house from Tolly, New York, says hello. First time, loving my shire. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate that. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to ask. We'll be happy to help. And, uh, and good luck on your adventure. Mary's in the house on a small family scale basis. Is there a need benefit to have a separate hatcher or is an incubator sufficient? Incubator sufficient. You don't need a hatcher. Uh, actually, what I think the best thing to do is is you start with an incubator and then when you uh, upgrade or when you increase your numbers or whatever the case may be, you can use your first incubator as a hatcher, but you really don't need it um, unless you're doing major numbers. Uh, Andrew says, my seven-year-old says he's so lucky and asked me to tell you his SSCs are laying now and today he got two sell on eggs from them. LOL, he's so happy. That is awesome. Congratulations. Uh, tell him uh, good luck and if he has any questions, let me know. And Jerry's in the house now. My second set is on their way. Hopefully be Tuesday or Wednesday. Absolutely. Um, good luck and obviously keep us posted. Callie Quailkeeper says, why do you prefer layer crumble, layer crumble over mini pellets? Do you think they consume more in a crumble form? They do. Uh, it's easier for them to process as well. Um, is why I, I like them. Less deaths. Uh, I mean, we've done all this uh, research before, so there's there's less deaths in the crumble. Not by a lot, but a little. Uh, but they are more, more productive in egg laying. Um, on a crumble and I would assume it's because of the the processing but I don't I don't know why uh, Chase says I'm still just amazed at how pretty all my birds are turning out to get uh, turning out got some pearls Egyptians Italians and wilds you got a great assortment uh, so congratulations to that but yeah you got some real pretty ones there uh, scrap WTF says I want speckled blue eggs uh, I do not work on those um, George and Jenna are going to start forcing me, uh, but I do think I held them off until after QuailCon, so I'm kind of excited about that, but I'm not going to be able to hold them off forever. Uh, Dwayne's in the house from Alabama. Welcome. We're glad you're here. Uh, Ontario, Canada says, Steve from Ontario, Canada, can you open, uh, can you open incubator briefly, just dropping a couple degrees of fact hatch? Uh, you don't want to open it very much. Uh, obviously, when you put the eggs in, you know, it could be reading 99.5 or, or in the Celsius. That's Fahrenheit. And then when you put the, the lid back on, obviously, it's going to have dropped. Um, but you really don't want to open it again until lockdown. So ideally, you just got to stay away from it. Uh, unless you got to fix something. Uh, Anime Gamer Creators in the house. Welcome. Glad you're here. Scrap says, I was thinking about Nurtrite 360, but I've seen many bad reviews. Uh, we had great success with it. Uh, we also had great success with the Little Giant as well. Um, but uh, yeah, I don't. I will always go. I'd always go by the reviews on on whatever platform you're purchasing from. But I had great great success with the Nurtrite 360 as well. Anime Gamer says, I got Quail University. That is awesome. Congratulations. Chase says, Scrap, I got an 84% hatch rate from the Nurtrite 360. There you go. That's a great hatch rate. False Farm says, Zach, we had a seven-month-old hen get weird. It's hard to describe. She started shaking her head and falling over, acting like gasping for air. No one else is doing it. Happened to one other three months ago. Um, most likely hit her head. Most likely. 
um, or got something stuck in her throat, choked. Um, usually that's a hitting the head kind of thing. Um, and yeah, because they're in, sm in, in uh, small quarters, um, if you did have something, then it wouldn't be like one every three months. Like it would be, hey, I don't have any more quail. What do I do? <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, S.O. Swanson says, James wants to know, if the free-ranging quail in the barn from last year, quail con still free-ranging in barn. Nope. Nope. They've, uh, they've fed a hawk, I do believe. Um, so, years ago, you know, because we have brooders, when we open them up, one might get flighty and jump out, and then, you know, we collect it whenever we can catch it and put it along. Well, with avian influenza that happened a few years ago, we can't do that anymore. So anything that's on the ground has to go like it cannot go in cages it cannot go back in a brooder like if it touches the ground it's done uh so usually we give them a little a couple of days to to uh enjoy life before their falconry food uh when he says i use the nurture 360 temperature held great but i had to use sponges in the water tracks to get the humidity to hold and i use towels around the outside there you go uh, it sounds like you did a lot of great things. So you, I mean, you were managing it extremely well. And that's kind of the job uh, when you incubate is to just manage it. You know what I mean? Uh, but it sounds like you were well, well prepared. You did great. Yes is in the house. Says hi, Zach. You're great. I have my first self, self-reared quail uh, today at four weeks old from the eggs hatch from quail from eggs you sent me. They're dreamy and beautiful. Very plentiful. That is awesome. Uh, you were doing extremely well. You're, you're moving on. Uh, extremely well. Congratulations to that, and uh, good luck on your future success, which I have no doubt that you'll do. Dreams Acres is in the house. I have a small group of four hens and two roos, uh, and every single egg from the pen were duds in the incubator except one egg. Is there a chance for these hens or give up hatching from them and just eat eggs? Um, if you've got four hens and two roos, it's not a fertility issue. In fact, they're probably getting overbred. Um, I wouldn't look at the, the fertility issue in, in the cage. I, I think it's a temperature issue. Um, cause we recommend five hens to one male, uh, and you should still have somewhere around an 85 to 90% fertility rate. Uh, if you've got two in there, all four of those hens are getting bred quite a bit. Uh, Scrap says, regardless of the bad reviews, Nurtrite 360 is still at the top of my list. I liked it a lot. George did not. Uh, but, you know, teach it some. Uh, Dwayne says, I got my eggs last week and I have 118 incubating. That is awesome. Uh, congratulations. Uh, Vase Place says, any piglets yet, Zach? Nope. Uh, and uh, our goal is not to do any more piglets. Um... They're probably already pregnant. We put the male back in there because we separated the male during the winter. Or after quail con, we separated the male by himself. And just let him in the field and then the rest of them were to pin. And then in April, we put the male back in there. And that was probably a horrible idea because uh, about a month ago, we decided we weren't going to breed anymore. So that probably messed everything up, but it is what it is. Anime Gamer says, on Chapter 4 of Quail University. That is awesome. Congratulations. Dr. Coney says, when signing up for QuailCon, how do I sign up my teenager? Uh, you would not buy any tickets. You'd buy the, the dinner, um, but that would be it. In the comments section, uh, you would just put, I'm bringing, you know, one child under 18 or whatever. Uh, in the comments, but you don't need to purchase anything except for the the dinner for the for the daughter or a teenager. You didn't say boy or girl. Wendy says for the brooder, I've kept the temp for the first week around nine nine degrees. They don't like any change. Uh, no, they don't like change. Uh, but uh, you watching them is better than you trying to you know maneuver the the uh, temperature and things like that. You're seeing what they need and you're reacting, and that's exactly how you need to raise quail. Or pretty much any farm animal. Um, uh, 
uh, Wendy says, will this change next week? Yeah, they grow real fast, real quick. So that 99 degrees next week will not be uh, acceptable. They'll, but they'll let you know. Uh, Stephanie is in the house. Hi from Franklin. Welcome. We're glad you're here. Andrea says, one of my new chicks today has sprayed leg, splayed leg. Uh, haven't had the... Had, haven't had that happen in a while. Had non-slip stuff and hatching basket. Maybe they were too crowded in the basket. Not much easy to do, is there? Um, yeah, I mean, every once in a while, it, it could be a fluke. I wouldn't worry about it too much. Um, yeah, rubber banded or put in a shot glass for a little bit, and it should be fine. Uh, no Reality 13 says, Zach, I didn't have any splay leg chicks, but I have two chicks after a couple have their legs go straight and straight day straight they ended up passing what would that have have been from um that sounds like splay leg to me um yeah it's, it sounds like splay leg to me uh and ch chicks can get splay leg up to day three mm -hmm. i need to look at my notes on that i'm pretty sure it's day three i'm gonna go with that but don't like quote me on that. I'm pretty sure, uh, cause they can get splay leg for the first few days and I'm pretty sure it's day three, but I, I don't remember that specifically. Um, so I mean, they could have hit something that's not slippery or they could have, you know, again, been a fluke or whatever, but it sounds like splay leg. Michael says quail con idea, balut eating contest. Uh, no, thank you. No, thank you. Thank you for the suggestion. Uh, but that one, I'm going to just nix. Uh, Kimberly says, I already sent an email, but we have 41 chicks in the brooder from the original 55 eggs. They hatched last Thursday, Wednesday, Thursday. That is wonderful to hear. Uh, thank you very much. I will not write that one down now because you said you sent the email, so I'll uh, wait on that so I don't double write it down. But thank you for letting me know, and congratulations on the hatch. Uh, you did absolutely fantastic. Good job. Um, Wendy says, Zach, my chicks are not liking any change in temperature week one yeah it will change next week we talked about that johnny says how long does it take to make them full grown uh they start laying eggs at around six weeks old um so they're they're producing at six weeks uh richie says if i can only stabilize between 99.3 and 100.3 even with the towel wrapped around would an occasional drop to 98.7 be a problem um so you want it to be 99.5 and the green zone would be 99 to 100. Um, so if you get below those, uh, you know, so like 98.5 to 99 and 100 to 100.5 would be like the yellow zone. Uh, and anything other than that would be red. It, it's messing up your hatch. Um, so it's probably, it, it, the fluctuation will affect your hatch a little bit. Um, so I would keep it wrapped, um, keep it well insulated. After this hatch, I'd probably even move it to a room that's not as, uh, doesn't have as much traffic. That might help a lot. Uh, but yeah, the fluctuation is definitely something that you'll need to look into. Uh, could be that the fan stopped working or is clogged, um, or it could just be in a high traffic area as well. So those are the, some things, uh, to look at. Uh, Joe Hughes in the house. I purchased 75 hatching eggs from my Shire farm. Cannot wait to receive them very soon. That is awesome. Good luck. And I wish you all the best. Uh, Mike Clark says, what is the current wait time for Jumbo Wild hatching eggs? I think on the web website it says six to ten weeks. Um, I think it's more like four to eight. Um, but I'm, I'm scared to put that yet because there's just so many orders. It gets really confusing. Um, but, uh, we're also going through another 900 grow outs this week of jumbos. Uh, so, um, what I've moved already and what we've moved in the past, 98% of them make weight, uh, which is 12 ounces at eight, at eight weeks old and they're laying eggs now. So once we move those into the, the jumbo breeding cages, like that's, that's a whole lot extra more eggs that I'm, I'm shipping out. So uh, we actually are getting a lot more caught up um, than what it says on the website currently. 
Uh, Sage Wolf says, I have a quail that is laying pure white eggs. That's not a big deal at all. Um, they just ran out of, of ink cartridge. Uh, but, uh, yeah, that is, sometimes that happens. Um, it's a deficiency, but it, it really doesn't affect anything. Yeah, no ink in the printer. Uh, Bill Thompson says, have you worked on black quail? We have dark Tibetans and we have grouse, so. But I don't, I don't call them black. Because they're not black. William says, I have two chicks that haven't grown much at all since hatching. They barely eat, mostly just lay around. Also, one only has one eye. When would calling be more humane or do you call chicks? Yep, yeah, I would call them, uh, is what I would do. Um, they're most likely runts, or they've got a deficiency, or whatever the case may be, and when they hit about three to four weeks old, those other quail are just going to pick on them a lot, because uh, they're small and, and, and puny and, and this, that, and the other. Uh, I, I'd call them now and put them out of the misery. Um, and, uh, and for some of you, you know, you might not like that answer, and that, that's okay. Teach its own. There's many different ways to raise quail. Uh, but when you raise for self-sufficiency, you're going to come into those situations where it actually is more humane to put it down, um, you know, than, than to make it suffer or, or whatever, because you're not going to fix that, you know what I mean? Uh, so, <clears throat> and they're not going to serve any purpose. Uh, so they're not, they're not going to lay even if they make it. They're not going to, you know, if it's a male, they're not going to produce. If it's a hen, they're not going to lay eggs. Um, and they're never going to get big enough to even butcher. So, I mean, I, I'd, I'd put them out of the misery now. <clears throat> uh, Robert says, hi, Zach. Got 15 hatches out of the 30 you sent me on March 29th. Got them on March 10th. That is wonderful to hear. Congratulations. Um, 15 out of 25. Uh, let's see. Robert, if you're still on, if you could let me know what kind you hatched, that'd be helpful. Um, but congratulations on the hatch. JD says, howdy from Illinois. Our family is so excited to go this year. I can't wait to, to, to see you guys at QuailCon. That's absolutely awesome. Uh, I'm really looking forward to it a lot. Uh, Loretta says, okay, bud, time to go to sleep. It's time to take care of you. Uh, gosh, five kids, a farm, and regular life, go to sleep. Well, I've only got three kids left. Two of them have, have uh, aged out, if you will. <laughs> so I've got a... Dear God, 20-year-old and an 18-year-old that are gone. 20. Yeah, she'll be 21 in December. Whew. Whew. Uh, let's see. Chase says, so I, I've got three that still are home, which is 13, 12, and 11. Because that's fun. That's fun ages. Um... Fun, fun little thing real quick. I don't mean to bore you, but I thought it was funny. So I saw this thing online. So I brought the three kids in one at a time. And my wife was in the room with me and she goes, uh, what are you doing? I said, no, nothing. So I yelled at the first kid and he came in and I said, all right, I'm going to ask you some things. And I just want you to tell me the best of your knowledge. What do you think it is? So I said, what do you think dial up is? And what do you think, um, a rotary phone is or, you know, um, I'm trying to think of one of the other questions I asked him. Um, what What is a collect call? And so I just asked him like five questions from back in the day. And um, it was hilarious. Absolutely hilarious. Um, I, said, what's a, I said, what's a CD Walkman? He goes, crutches? He said, yeah, okay. <laughs> so, yeah. Getting old. Uh, False Farm says, bluting, Blute eating contest, hard pass. Yeah, that's that's not for me. Chase says, I got a small wild and pearl hen will walk up to me every time I sit. And I don't, I sit, I don't, uh, on, on the brooder, I sit on the brooder. Very cool. Yeah, some of them can be really nice. Um, most of them are pretty nice. Susan says, hi from Jackson, Michigan. You keep going away from me. Hi from Jackson, Michigan, the little quail hut. Uh, Quail Con, yeah, absolutely. Hopefully you can make it. Uh, Thomas says best incubator. Um, we had success with a lot of them. Uh, if you're going big, I love the GQF. But if you actually go to our YouTube channel and go to the playlists, you can go to um, 
quail product reviews and on there you can actually see we did a review of the Nurture Ride 360, the Little Giant, the Hubba Bader, and you can kind of see what works best for you because I'm a big believer that uh, the, the incubator kind of matches uh, you, what you want. You know what I mean? Like I personally like the Nurture Ride 360, George likes the Hubba Bader or the Little Giant, and neither one's a wrong answer. You know what I mean? Uh, so that kind of gives you an idea of how they work and, and what they're like. JD says, I have quail that have not laid yet. As they hatched last October, they are outside and were wrapped for winter. Was it due to light? Yep, due to light. They need about 16 to 18 hours of light a day. Um, so yeah, it, it was a light thing. No Reality 13 says, thank you for that. Was very concerned about the calls. Tried to nurse these two all I could. I had 72 eggs, 40 H hatched. That's great. That's still a great hatch rate. Um, Colleen says, I have a YouTube, I had a YouTube say that when he gets his eggs in the mail, he waits a day before he puts them in the incubator. Is this necessary? Yeah, you want to wait at least 24 hours uh, to let the eggs settle. Yep, that's absolutely necessary. Um, Andrew says, don't laugh, but I got this splay leg chick in a shot glass with my hand over it because it jumps out. LOL, now what? Um, you might want to put like a book or or something on top of it. Uh, you need to leave them in there for about an hour or two. Uh, and that usually fixes the leg. Um, believe it or not. <laughs> it is really funny, but that usually fixes it. Let's see. Um, give me just a second so I can go murder a dog. Sorry, everybody. I appreciate the wait. Oh, I hate dog barking. Like, it's like chalkboard. Like, fingers, fingernails on a chalkboard. Like, I can't stand it. I hate it. Luckily, we only have four Great Danes, so I don't have to deal with it very much. Uh, JD says, we love the 360. There you go. I think that's where I'm right. I'm at. Yes, that's where I'm at. Thomas says, I have chickens, but have been looking at getting into quail and getting some of the hatching time cages. There you go. Um, I'd also take a look at Wynola Ranch cages as well as Dale's Quails cages. They're really awesome too. Uh, but uh, yeah, good luck. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask. Uh, Courtney says, I'm... Waiting for my eggs to ship out. So excited to get silvers. Wonderful. I'm about max on the silvers right now. Um, golds, sparklies, fab fees, and Schofield silvers I'm a little behind on. Um, but everything else I'm actually doing really well on. So, of course, it can't be everything at one time. But I'm, I'm working on it as quickly as I can go. I do have a brooder full of, of silvers. Uh... Silvers, Germans, and Pansy Fees, so that kind of resolves some of it. Uh, and my gold bottom amber's are completely full, like I can't, I can't add any more, so I'm working on it. I'll get you out as soon as I can. Bob Wolf says, do I increase the light to a 12 to 16 hours at three weeks or just before they start laying? You don't really need to increase the light until about six weeks old, uh, and then go from 16 to 18 hours of light. Uh, at about six weeks, but I, I wouldn't use the electricity uh, until they're about five or six weeks old. Um, JD says, taught my 11-year-old daughter to call and cook. She loves it. There you go. That's awesome. Um, start them young. I lost my spot. Uh, Bob says, do I put grit in the sandbox or in a separate dish? Uh, quail don't need grit. They don't need help breaking down their food because uh, they're not on the ground. Unless you have them in an aviary, and in that case, um, I don't know because I use cages. But I've, we've never given them grit, even when they were in the aviary. 
Jason says, got my feather sex will mix in the incubator from you. Had to wait out the tornado to ensure power. There you go. Uh, well, good luck. Obviously, keep me posted, and I'm sure you're going to do great. <clears throat> uh, my Ranger buddy says hello from Ranger Grove in Canton, Texas. Welcome. Uh, your eggs actually go out tomorrow, I believe. Tomorrow or Tuesday, but I'm pretty sure it's tomorrow. Uh, so we'll get you those out. Uh, Beekeeper says, can they l eat live mealworms? Uh, some have said they need to be frozen first. Uh, dried mealworms are ideal. Um... It wouldn't go great with live mealworms. They're just not very smart. I wouldn't do it. You could try it, though. I mean, they might catch on. I don't know. I have not tried it. Uh, Thomas says, should do a video about a cheap, middle-priced, and ex uh, expensive cage video. We have. Uh, on the quail product reviews, we've done cage videos for Dale's Quails and Winola Ranch. Um, and we've shown how we build ours as well. Uh, but yeah, it's do it yourself and, and two different options to, to purchase, uh, quail cages. Uh, I like them both. They're both completely different. One's metal, one's wood. Um, you know, and, uh, and there's, there's a lot of differences in them, but I don't think you can go wrong with either one. And I know why Nolan Ranch extremely well. Uh, we've been working together for eight, nine, ten years. Um, and then, um, you know, I've been working with Dale for the past three or four years and, uh, both of them contribute to the 18 under contest for free, um, which is very generous of them. And, uh, they're both going to be contributing a lot to QuailCon. So, uh, great people. Kishnery says, you should have played the old sound for dial up internet forum. There you go. Uh, they have been like, something's wrong. When you get to the basement, there's a tornado coming. I'm sure is what he would have said. Scrap says, I want to done so they eat chick starter until freezer camp. How many mealworms is too many? Um, I'm not a big fan of celadons. We don't sell them here. And um, usually you do chick starter until 8 to 10 weeks old, which we butcher at 8 weeks. So, yeah. And uh, I have no idea. I, I don't supplement food. Um, we customize ours because... Customizing is a whole lot easier than trying to supplement the feed. Robert says, hi again, Zach. Ordered the jumbo mix. i glad I got the 15 since I have issues with humidity and a few low temp dips from the incubator. There you go. Uh, make sure you wrap the incubator. That will help with the dips uh, and the fluctuations in temperature. And uh, with the humidity, you can take a little Tupperware um, bowl or whatever, fill it up with water, put a washcloth or rag or... Uh, a sponge in there that will help increase the humidity at lockdown as well. So there's a couple ideas for you. You still had a pretty good hatchery. You bought 25, you had 15 hatch. Still not a horrible hatchery. You still did good. What, what is that? Um... Courtney says, I've been feeding my weak old babies live mealworms and they don't have a problem. There you go. See, I've not tried that. Uh, Scrap says, oh, when using Nurtry 360, do those add-on quail trays work well? I've not tried them. I did them without the quail trays, uh, but I've heard great things about them, so I, I think you can go either way. My Ranger Buddy says, I'm so excited. Zach is shipping out my eggs this week over. Got two Farming Innovators 4250 Pros that went out on me during the last hatch we just finished. Looks like another new unit this week. Ugh. Sorry to hear that. By this time, you could have just bought a GQF. <laughs> uh, Wendy says, does anyone use apple cider vinegar in the water? I have heard this is good for them. Uh, you can. There's really not a huge difference. Uh, we've tried that before. We've not seen any any difference in production or or uh, length of time frame or or anything at all. Uh, I'm not saying it hurts them. I just I haven't seen the benefits of that. Um, my Ranger buddy says any recommendations on the one twenty five dollar range? I don't know how much it is because they've increased prices so much recently with inflation and and whatever. Um, but uh, 
I was really impressed with The Little Giant. I like that one a lot. I didn't think I would. I was really against it. I've heard horror stories. We got it, and I kind of liked it a lot. Well, and Joey says, I've learned a lot about incubating using my little giant. There you go. Uh, Katrina says, "Great, da your Great Danes sound good. At least you don't have chihuahuas. Um, yeah, that's not our household. <laughs> uh, Dreams Acre says, for Splay Leg, I saw in one of my groups someone took a plastic Easter egg, made a hole in, hole in it, and placed the chick in that to help fix legs. That's pretty creative. Um, S.O. Swanson says, looking forward to camping during QuailCon with Hank. There you go. Um, yeah, Hank won't be out there. We've, uh, we've had to fence in some of our yard. Right now we've got an electric fence that we were using for the pigs and the goats, and we did that for our whole yard, uh, because they kept running away. Um, and it was really embarrassing and awful, and I had to stop what I was doing to go drive and get them, you know, eight houses over. So now they're they're trapped, um, and Jenna's getting them collars, so they ain't gonna go too far anymore. Uh, Maria says bark collar works wonders. They get used to it, even if it's loose and out of battery, they don't bark anymore. I don't. I don't like them barking, but I would rather them bark. Like they don't bark very often. Like we're out, kind of. We're not any main roads, you know. The road that you. The road that we're on is a quarter of a mile away because our driveway is a quarter of a mile. So it's not like we hear a lot back here, but when they do hear something, they bark a lot. And that's kind of the point of having the big dogs. So, I mean, I get it, but I just don't like it. <laughs> but if we were closer to people, you know, if we had neighbors, which we don't have neighbors, but if we had neighbors, we would definitely have to. Because when they start going, like, they all get together and they just, their bark travels. Uh, Kenny says, what age do you transition from brooder to garage cage prior to going outside? Uh, three weeks. Three weeks would be completely fine. Uh, they can actually go outside in about four weeks, no matter what. Um... Anime says you need grit if you're using mash or snacks, snacks for them. That is true. I mean, if you're feeding them certain things, they'll need grit. Katrina says I give grit in a separate container. They will also eat sand and use that as grit. There you go. Michael says, Zach, so I bought these old chicken cages and the bottom wire is too big. My thought was that I would cut off the bottoms and replace with half inch by one wire. What gauge do you recommend? Um, that's a great question. It's 916. I don't know. We've used everything from 16 to 19. I think we like the 16 the most. But, I mean, they've all worked fine. Half inch by one inch is, is correct. 16 to 19 gauge. Um, Anime Gamer says, My Shire Farmer, have you taken Quail University yet? Yeah. yeah for the past 12 years. <laughs> Uh huh. Jason says, I fed some live mealworms. They love them. Uh, very funny to watch. There you go. I didn't think they'd eat them. Hmm. They still surprise me. Uh, Marty says, Are there any options for an aggressive roof? Five weeks old and I'm ready to cook them. Uh, sometimes they're just jerks. Um, you know, I mean, it's hard to say because a lot of aggression issues are environmental, but not always. Uh, if you're finding a five-week-old that's either not mature yet or just started to be mature and he's already aggressive, I'd, I'd kill it is what I would do. But... Um, yeah, that's what I would do. And S.O. Swanson's right, 19 gauge is better, not 16. 19, we have tried 16, and it works okay. We've got those in the brooders. The 19 is what's in the main barn. Uh, we like that a lot more, and coated for sure. 
I'd rather do 16 gauge coated wire than 19 gauge non-coated wire for sure. But if you can get, if it's perfect, 19 gauge coated half inch by one inch wire for the breeders. Kenny says, we have two Nurturite 360s, did one traditional hatch and one dry hatch, both worked well, highly recommend standard and jumbo. There you go, thank you very much. Buddy says, I ordered uh, the 360 already, so no matter what, I'm sticking with it, LOL. There you go. <clears throat> And that, ladies and gentlemen, is all of the announcements. So uh, the first 20 to 21 minutes, uh, I did a bunch of announcements that I promise you really don't want to miss. Uh, we have a lot of stuff going on that you will not that you will want to be a part of and you won't want to miss out on. We did the 18 under contest, so Angel, congratulations on that. I explained what that was. Uh, so far, we've already had 28 people graduate from Quail University, which is absolutely fantastic. Great feedback. Everybody's loving it. I'm very happy about it. Uh, proud to be a part of it. Uh, and then I gave all the information, not all, I gave most of the information about QuailCon uh, at the beginning. So make sure you check that out. Make sure you check out the tickets on our website, myshirefarm.com. It's going to be absolutely amazing. And uh, we'll be doing more videos about it and things like that shortly. Uh, I've got a couple more comments and then we will, uh, we will get out of here. i got to take a drink because my throat is on fire. All right. Uh, let's see. Yes, says, last week you told me my quail quit laying likely due to molting. I think, they, I think that you were right. They have picked back up all at once. Thank you for reassuring things from Ohio. Not a problem. And, uh, you know. Sometimes I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> and so Swanson says, thanks for the updates on QuailCon and thank you for taking time out to answer all our questions for all you do. Well, thank you very much for asking and, and being a part of it. <laughs> so if it wasn't for you guys and it wasn't for this great community, then I would just be sitting here by myself, talking to myself all the time. So I'm glad you guys show up. Um... False Firm says, good night, all great live as always. Thank you very much. Dr. Connie says, I got signed up for QuailCon. Absolutely. Uh, hopefully you can make it this year. We'd love to meet you. And uh, I, can't I can't wait till QuailCon. We've got a lot of really cool stuff going on. Uh, Wendy says, good night all. Well, thanks for showing up. I appreciate it. Katrina says, thank you so much. Thank you for such great information. I'm so excited to see people at QuailCon this year. Absolutely. Yes, says, get well soon, Zach. My finger will work itself out. Uh, Anime says, I want to roast marsh marshmallows if there's a bonfire. There's going to be three in the field as long as it doesn't rain. Um, uh, Eric Willis says, thankfully the storm didn't knock out my internet, so I got to stick around. Wonderful, and uh, stay safe with that. Uh, S.O. Swanson says, Quail Con is a family reunion for people who choose not the ones you inherited. There, there you go, that's one way to look at it. Uh, Anime Gamer says, I'm going to bug my boyfriend to go, but it all depends on how our situation is uh, since we don't live together. There you go. Well, hopefully you can make it. Make sure you check it out anyway, and uh, I will see everybody at QuailCon, but obviously I'll be back next Sunday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for a live Q&A. Uh, I've got some big stuff going on this week, but I do have plans to make a video about QuailCon and posting that, so make sure you check that out. Share it with all your friends and family and customers and all this stuff. It's going to be absolutely amazing. A lot of great speakers, a lot of great workshops, a lot of great master classes, a lot of great expert tables, a lot of fun games, tours, and, and so much more. So much more. Uh, so, uh, everybody... Have a great night. Thanks for listening to me for so stupid stinking long. I appreciate it. Uh, if you missed it, watch the first 20, 25 minutes. You will not want to be late. Um, nope, I was reading. You will not want to miss what I said at the beginning. And uh, <laughs> uh, it was a funny one. Uh, you won't want to miss what I said at the very beginning. And uh, I appreciate everybody for showing up. And as always, everybody, until next time, stay safe.